Oh, hey, I see you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me give it a heart. Share the mic. Oh, I see it now too. Cool. All right. You know what? I'll keep it up on my phone here. Can you still hear me? Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, I hear you through Zoom, but let me open you up here. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So it was muting it on Facebook so you could hear me on Zoom. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna okay, so <laughs> share it. Facebook, so you can hear me on Zoom. Okay, what? Share it. Are you sharing it everywhere? Yeah, yeah, I already did. I shared it in my Facebook group, so. Oh, perfect. Let me share it. Mine in. <clears throat> Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Monday's Masterclass with Miriam Pop. Did I say that right? Yeah. yeah simple, easy. <laughs> Vibrant lifestyle coaching. Yeah. And she is a self care expert and she guides women on not going into burnout and <laughs> coming back to themselves. She's a, also a coach, and I'll hand it over to her to intro herself a little bit more. Oh, yeah. So thanks, Allison. Yeah, that's great. Um, I am the founder of Vibrant Lifestyle Coaching. Um, I believe that um, self-care is how we manage uh, the impact of our lives, right? Our impact on ourselves that our lives have. Um, I work primarily with women, overworked, overstressed women on a mission. Um, I help them basically come back to themselves, right? I help them tune into themselves, their truths. Um, I help them acquire habits, tools, tips that help them navigate their, their worlds and manage their stress, right? Um, a lot of that does come down to self-care, um, how we're nurturing ourselves, right? And so that's been a great part of the discussion I've been having with Allison here every Monday, um, just, you know, how we can go about caring for ourselves, prioritizing that, how we can pour out um, while also pouring into ourselves, caring for ourselves. So it's been a real fun topic to, mm -hmm. it's one of my favorite topics to um, just kind of shoot the shit on, right? For sure. <laughs> and how, unpack uh, about. It, all of those, unpack different patterns that have been coming up with our clients. And I, I want to dive right in something that's been coming up that I've been seeing, especially for female entrepreneurs is applying, and you said this so succinctly when we were talking off, offline, like applying our own advice that we give to our clients, this ex expertise and turning that inward, making the white space to the space for ourselves to actually listen to that advice and apply it to our lives. It sounds a lot more simplistic than it actually happens <laughs> comes into fruition and something I ask my clients sometimes is if you had a client or you had a best friend who was going through what you are right now like yeah. what would you what would you tell them in this situation or sometimes as a parent like if you were me what would you tell what would you tell your kid if they were doing or feeling X, Y, Z. Sometimes that's easier to turn it outward or to guide someone else than it is for us to see clearly what's really going on with us and then to make that time, like I was saying. Yeah. Like the relationship coach may need to go through a few horrendous relationships to then really be able to be like, that's enough. I'm... <laughs> I am going to really take my own advice. I'm so done with this. These are my standards now. And then she might realize, oh my gosh, these standards are the exact same standards that I've been telling my clients for the last decade to have. But for some reason, I didn't have it or I wasn't doing the inner work like I'm capable to guide them on. And 
I do you see that pattern as well sometimes? Um, I mean, I'll even just put my throw myself under the bus and say personally. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Personally, I can. Um, there have been times where I'll be in sessions with a client, talking a client through something, shine a, shining a light on um, something they've said or highlighted. And I'll have moments after the session where I'm like, oh, when I said X, Y, and Z, <laughs> I really need to be doing that myself, right? <laughs> and so I think in the beginning of my um, journey as a coach, that was a little triggering, you know? It was a little triggering. Uh, it was a little, um, it was hard to see, oh, oh, I am Am I trying to, is Miriam trying to tell Miriam she's got work to do? Like, <laughs> what is this, you know? Yeah. Um, but it definitely does come up in, to be in a space where I can be removed and see it, you know, is a blessing. However, that hasn't always been the case where I can see that, oh, this advice I'm giving, I need to actually take, <laughs> right? I think it's been um, constantly being honest and open and just doing the self-awareness work that has allowed me to be able to see when those moments pop up where the advice I'm giving is actually something I need to be taking right now. Um, but I love, I love how life will work out like that and give those opportunities to, um, to see where, to see where I can grow more or do more work, right. To, to elevate or whatever it may be. Um, but I do think that there's something to be said about, you know, the advice we give often being the, the very advice we also need for, for our journeys. Um, I do believe that we attract different people and situations in our lives that are perfect for the path that we're on. Um, and so sometimes it is a client coming along who mirrors some of your own experiences who you know brings forth advice from you <laughs> that supports them so deeply, but also can support ourselves because um, it it is it can be it can be hard to witness ourselves, and so sometimes we need that mirror, we need that other person um, to kind of help to to shine that light to make it easier to detach and see things from maybe even a different point of view. Completely yes. And I do agree, it takes that self-awareness piece to be able to step back and say, oh, did I need even also like, did I need that reminder? Hmm. Am I really doing that? Because I know I know that, but yeah. <laughs> really applying it to my own life. And I often or I'll give the space and let my clients know if they felt insecure in any way to be in that kind of guide or mentor coach position like you only need to be one or two steps ahead in some way with what you're guiding them on and often they're going through something that we went through six months ago even or a year ago or maybe probably about six months to a year with, with is the kind of the pattern that I see yeah. So I can say, oh, I did feel that when, when you, when I went through that too. And yeah. these are some of the strategies or some of the things that I did. But even with, within that, I'm reminded uh, if I wish that I, I probably could have recovered a lot faster. <laughs> if I know what I know now and had those strategies then and then reminding myself am I really doing those things <laughs> yeah. like you said reflecting after the consultation sometimes am I yeah. actually applying those to my own life and if for, for myself we've been rebuilding our podcast page which your your episode will be on there soon oh cool like, <laughs> like putting all the podcast videos because all the audio version is on the mm -hmm. Spotify and iTunes and amazing, amazingness there. Then we have the video file also. And I wanted to put all of those on YouTube. It's been like uh, three years I've been wanting to do that. <laughs> 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 so we're getting them all on YouTube with the description that's on Spotify, the same one, and then embedding those into a new page for the website. So it's like newly designed and 
coded and, and everything. <laughs> so all the videos will automatically be there and be able to watch episode after episode of the, the video version, but actually stored on YouTube. And that's been a huge project. Yeah, to actually, thank you. Like to redesign the podcast page and get that ready for like the kind of the infrastructure for the team to then, but it's one of, that's like me actually applying what I guide my clients on. Yeah, <laughs> doing, actually, doing the work yourself. Yeah, yeah, doing it for, with myself and within the team. Yeah, and yeah. But you know what, that is, um, this is going to be personal opinion. <laughs> the personal opinion of Miriam Yusmini Pop right now. But I believe coaching with integrity or doing anything with integrity is saying, okay, well, I've been here. I know this. I've had this experience. Um, I like to say it's, you know, putting a purpose to your pain or saying, okay, being able to relate and say, oh, I've been there. I've done this. I, I've stumbled this way. I can see where you're headed, you know, and, and, and navigating things from that avenue. Or, um, you know, mm -hmm. coaching with integrity, you, using your mess as your message. But I think it's important that um, we're out here leading with our own experiences, right? Versus trying to guide people in places that we have never been or experienced or had to navigate ourselves. Not that every experience we coach a person through or guide someone through, we've been through, but there should be some parallel mm -hmm. um, to be able to create that safe container, right? So, uh, you know, for your line of work, being in this space now where you are doing that work makes you more relatable and can create those deeper connections with your clients because you understand the process. You've been there, you've grown through it, not gone through it, grown <laughs> through it. Grown <laughs> through it, yeah, grown definitely. And that, Definitely. you know, that just um, enriches your work and, and your connection and, and, you know, the power that you bring to everything that you do. Um, so I think it, it, you know, putting a purpose to your pain and using your mess as your message um, are just two powerful ways that you can show up, um, show up and grow, show up and be more vibrant, plug. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, and it's, you know, it's, it's also a way to just kind of, I've said it, but put a purpose to your pain a purpose to the things that you've been through so it wasn't for nothing right um you're showing someone else the the possibilities right um and even just showing yourself here comes the self-care part but showing yourself how capable you are right yes Not a nice little bit of nurturing that um, i don't think we on a daily do enough just witnessing ourselves honoring ourselves and saying hey look at you you, you, you go through stuff and you're still standing, right? You grow yes. through stuff and you're still standing. Yes. And I was going to ask you too mm -hmm. about our mess is our message. How yeah. do you suggest that they or the, the people listening process a little bit, or do you find it best to have a little bit of space after going through some of the yeah, yeah. processing? So be able Use to your really message, your message. I'm not saying be out on a soapbox saying, oh, I've been through X, Y, and Z. It was hella traumatic. Oh my, you know, <laughs> I'm not saying do that with these, your mess is your message, but say um, you see someone struggling, someone going through something, right? Maybe you catch wind of it and you hear about it, or maybe they come directly to you with it. And it's something that you've been through yourself. Why not share your story of overcoming where you were compared to where you are now? Uh, you don't know how much hope and inspiration that will give someone else and it's uh, using your mess as your message so i'm not saying um, that you know whatever you're going through right in this moment go out there and tell it to everybody but if a moment comes along that you're comfortable in sharing your story something that you're comfortable sharing that's why i said you know um, a moment of overcoming that you're ready to talk about mm -hmm. right? and yeah. you know when you're ready, no one else knows. I was gonna say that I know when I'm ready, when I've gone through some of the processing myself, I've journaled about it, talked about it, talked to a counselor about it perhaps. Yeah. And then, or like kind of, it doesn't, I, for me, it doesn't feel like it has to be completely healed, but yeah. it's like, I can see the kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I feel like I'm somewhat healed from the experience and, that I also, I think it's important to take in to the aspect of not like not having anything to hook into 
to be triggered yeah. by that. Like we've released some of that resentment or forgiven ourselves. So there's very little painful little soft spots. <laughs> right. Talking about it isn't eliciting any type of um, strong emotion. Mm -hmm. Right. Maybe the strong emotion is gratitude. But if the strong emotion is, you know, anger, sadness, fear, maybe that's not your moment. Maybe that's not the moment to share that message. Maybe it's just, I, I hear you, right? Maybe it's just, I, you tell that person, I hear you. I understand you. Uh, I, I get it. Maybe that's enough. And maybe even just saying that even is using your message as your message. I understand you. I hear you. I get what you're going through. Sometimes it's just being there for someone. Maybe it's just validating them right? But you can validate someone just by saying, I hear what you're saying, right? I, I, I'm holding this space for you. Do you mm -hmm. need to share more? Whatever you're comfortable with, mm -hmm. but whatever feels good to you in that moment mm -hmm. of, of relating or creating that safe space, um, do that. And that's what I mean when I say use your message mess as your message. Um, and it's, it's just that opportunity to, to spread light it's that opportunity to share. Mm -hmm. It's that opportunity to, to give someone else hope. So what you went through wasn't in vain because now you've shared, you've grown, you've shared with somebody else in whatever capacity has felt good to you um, and supportive for you. Um, and, and, and now everyone has a chance, right? Everyone has a chance. And even that other person can possibly move through what they're experiencing faster because they've got that little bit of hope or have felt validated or have felt seen, um, you, really have, you really have no idea, you know, what kind of impact you can have on someone else. Yes, actually, was that reminded me this week. So like I do a blog every week in an email newsletter and oftentimes share something like that I feel, I mean, I've got the to probably towards the middle or end of the healing journey. And okay, I feel like this can really benefit someone else. And sometimes there's crickets. Sometimes there's a lot of people who reach out to me during the week. But this last week, a woman said to me on a private message, I just really love your newsletter so much. Like I have started you motivated me to start a weekly newsletter to share out more vulnerably with my audience. And then when I started getting together, even the first one, I mm -hmm. realized, oh my God, how much energy and time and it like vulnerable it felt to do it. And I just wanted to reach out and say to you how much I even more so appreciate <laughs> you doing this. <laughs> yeah. And that clicked for me too. Sometimes we don't realize also until we start the journey ourselves, we look back and we look forward to other people that are kind of maybe a little further on the journey. And we think, oh my gosh, I didn't, I didn't realize how vulnerable that was for them or how much time that took. And I found that fascinating. Have you seen that too? <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, it's interesting when we leave our own bubbles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel especially um, entrepreneurs, we can mm -hmm. be in our own worlds, just working away, creating away, you know, and then we come outside of that and, you know, someone witnesses us or, or takes the time to say, hey, I see you. And it kind of can, you know, at least for me, it'll, I need people to kind of, I'm not to mention it. I need people to do that for me. I'm not mm -hmm. good at peeking my head out and witnessing how far something, how far I've come or the things mm. that have been accomplished. I just, I just get things done. It needs to get done. Yes, so yes. here we are. <laughs> I don't like, relate at all. No, I, I completely yeah. relate. I completely 100% relate. <laughs> It'll be someone else who's like, uh, Miriam. And I'm like, yes. oh, 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 okay, cool. So <laughs> <laughs> definitely, um, I always feel blessed in those moments where, you know, um, someone has taken the time to say, hey, I see you. Um, Same here. Yeah. And anybody watching this on the replay or right now, because if we can't see when it's broadcasted from Zoom, like how many people are watching or comments. But if you're mm -hmm. watching our replay, like take some time. I urge you. I constantly give that same message because so many of us 
our head down, supporting our clients, trying to yeah. find time to support ourselves, you know, barely sometimes finding time to do that and our loved ones. And it, it means the world. Yeah. It means the world to us. It, it, <laughs> two people here to say it means the world. If somebody doesn't say anything back to you, like maybe don't follow that person, maybe <laughs> move on. But most of the time, <laughs> Like for me or for Miriam and my team, it means the world when we receive a testimonial, when we hear that somebody ordered our best-selling book that we published in March. Mm -hmm. I was just checking today and already like a Euro, I had to think about that for a second. Euro, <laughs> <laughs> currency, Canadian, and what's the other one? A G, B, G, D, Great British, gbp or like the greatest the pound so there's mm -hmm. like all these different currencies of different continents that people have are reading our book and then just well like, congratulations to you i see you, you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's definitely an affirmation or validation like continue to put your story out there you never know who's going to read it or who's going to stumble upon and like you said continuously give light to those people, even if they're not all saying something, but if you're one of those people witnessing their light and seeing them, yeah. please reach, please tell them. And yeah, 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 say something. See someone shining, you know, mm -hmm. comment, mm -hmm. you know? And guess what? Even if you see someone not shining, you can still speak some encouragement into them, you know? They, they, they need it just as much. So um, anywhere that we can, um, uplift each other, simple things. You don't know how much of an impact that's happening, having on someone. So I know we've been talking a lot about self-care and I do have a few pieces about nurturing yes. that I wanna share, but I think it's also important just to be mindful of the little things that you can do day to day to, to nurture others, especially, you know, even if it's just the people in your own world, in your own bubble that, you know, you engage with, or if it's someone you're passing by on the street, I mean, I. Have, I'm always telling, I'm always looking for stuff that I like on other people just to say, hey, I see you, you know, mm -hmm. I think, um, I think that's what a lot of us just want in life is just to be seen. Oh, okay. yeah, for sure. Just, yeah, so let me, let me dive into some of this okay. here. Yes. Right. <laughs> so one of the things I want to make sure I share today was um, nurturing yourself shouldn't be adding to your stress. I think it's very easy to make self-care, especially where we see self-care is such a buzzword right now. I think it's very easy to make self-care um, a thing. I know, I know I talked about this last time, but using <laughs> self-care to escape, but we can definitely, um, you know, put a lot of pressure on ourselves for our self-care to look a specific way. So if you are finding yourself in that space where, oh my God, I didn't do X, Y, and Z today. I had to do it at this time. I had to look like this. Now you're making yourself anxious or stressed out. Maybe you're holding tension in your jaw and your shoulders. Uh, maybe you're noticing your stomach start to bother you. You're becoming aware of different areas you're holding stress and tension in your body, right? Now we know that that no longer de-stressing we've now have created our self-care to stress us out right so let's really be mindful of that so how do we be mindful of our self-care and not adding to our stress right so our second piece here is allow your self-care to flow with your life okay hmm. so know the things that make you you know the things that fill you up know the things that make you shine brighter know the things that make you happy add them in where you can all right so if you know um, i'm big on having a morning ritual if you know you like to spend your mornings with a workout listen to a podcast say your affirmations home cooked breakfast i'm thinking of all the things that i used to love <laughs> <laughs> when i before i was an entrepreneur and i still um was working in the salon right and so i knew i liked to start my day that way but say i was running late or say this is when i was working in the salon and working and going back to school and i couldn't make it to the gym because i had to work on a research paper i would beat myself up and so mm -hmm. my routine became part of my stressor right so what i had to learn was what i can get done has to be good enough 
Exactly. What I can get done has to be good enough. I can't focus on what I wasn't able to fit in. That just wasn't, that wasn't lined up in the cards for me today. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to be excited and proud of myself for what I do get done, right? For what I yes. am able to make happen. So if it wasn't, you know, the gym, home cooked breakfast, affirmations, um, and a pot, you know, in a podcast, but maybe it was still my home cooked meal. I'm not eating it out of the drive through. Okay, great. <laughs> right. Like that is still super nurturing for myself. It's supporting my body. It's supporting my mind because I've got to slow down and be present when I'm cooking. So I'm still getting the benefits from it. So mm -hmm. allow your self care to flow with your life. Your self care shouldn't be adding to your stress. Okay. So if you're finding yourself stressed out or feeling pressure, or feeling anxious about your routine, fall back. And this is what you're going to start asking yourself every day when you wake up. What do I need to feel good today? Hmm. Maybe the answer is, I don't know. Okay, cool. Send an alert on your phone, come back two hours later, have it pop up again. What do I need to feel good today? Listen to the first thing that pops up. Maybe it's, I just need to sit outside in the sun. Mm -hmm. Go do that. Maybe it's, you know what? I really need to stick to a schedule today. That's going to make my life easier. Okay, do that. But allow yourself that time to ask allow what pops up to flow with your life and be aware of if that self-care piece, that self-care um, activity, habit, tool, whatever that you're trying to add into your life, be aware, is it, am I adding pressure? Is it stressing me out? Is it bringing me joy or is it depleting from me? Go from there. Right. So I'll say it one more time to really hammer this home. I'm really big on repeating things, especially in threes. So what are we going to do? We're going to start our days by asking, what do I need to do today to feel good? All right. You're going to make sure that your self-care flows with your life. And you're going to be super aware. Your self-care should not be adding to stress. Okay. It should not be a stressor in your world. Um, I'll tell another mini story and then that's my spiel. But um, for those of you who don't know, I used to be in competitive fitness. So I would be in the gym six days a week for almost two hours. I'd be meal prepping, measuring my meals, all the things, right? And it got to the point where that lifestyle, although healthy in aspects, because we've got physical movement, right? We've got, you know, nutrient dense foods all the time. However, the, the restriction, the rules that I'm not the person who can be doing the same thing. Like it just was so restrictive for me. And so what in turn, that was becoming a bigger stress than it was becoming a supportive uh, aspect to my life, right? So I really had to pull back and start looking differently at how I did health how I did nutrition, how I did fitness, how that all looked in a way that supported me, added to me versus mm -hmm. stressing and taking away, right? It really was getting to the point where um, it was taking from me more than it was giving, right? And so make sure your self-care habits are adding more mm -hmm. than they are taking away. And the yeah. things that are taking away, stress, adding pressure to you, right? The things that you're not at the end of it, it might be a struggle to do it, but at the end of it, we should be feeling good. If we're not feeling right. good, big sign here. That's okay. a big sign. And, and I wanna add to that too. I feel sometimes we need to accept feedback or okay be open to feedback from our loved ones because mm -hmm. when we're in that state of i gotta do this i gotta stay on this regimen mm -hmm. i gotta have this structure sometimes we're not even aware because we're so in it yeah. that it is causing us stress so i want to just add on to that if your loved ones are telling you are you sure this is really a good fit for you? Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, I'm kind of sensing some anxiety around all this. It's, you know, you kind of haven't been in the best mood lately. Uh, they're like trying so hard to be loving and supportive <laughs> of this. Well, I'm, glad, I'm glad they're trying to be loving and supportive because I can remember, <laughs> I can remember very clearly already knowing that I needed to leave the competitive fitness world, already knowing that like, 
I had my fun. I've got my pictures with abs. I can say I've been there. Like, that's all I really cared about. Like, I'll be real. That's all I really cared about. Let me have some <laughs> pictures. I can be old and showing people like your girl had abs. Like, <laughs> all right. So, I already knew that I was kind of done with that world. I didn't have another competition coming up. Um, so I wasn't training. And I remember my brother just being like, I like you better when you can eat whatever you want. And I just looked at him and I was like, no shit, me too. Okay, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so, you know, it's great if people are going to come in and tell us lovingly, hey, I see that this isn't necessarily working out. It's great if we have other people who tell us straight up, hey, look, I let, you're a nicer person when <laughs> X, right. Y, and Z. Um, but however it gets delivered, make sure we're coming back to self and just being like, does this resonate with me? Is mm -hmm. this triggering to me? If it is triggering, why does this trigger me? Because it's the truth? Because I'm not ready to hear someone else? Because I don't value their opinion? Not everyone's, you know, <laughs> not everyone's opinion is, is uh, you know, worth it. However, if it's coming from that loving space, like you mentioned, um, be clear with yourself on what you're ready to hear and process. Yes. And sometimes it's really hard, like I said, to see <laughs> that maybe it would be like me trying to wake up at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. I may not be such a nice person at like 3 p.m. or 4 yeah. p.m. that day because <laughs> yeah. I start to feel like there's a lull. So then I realize, okay, maybe I need to wake up a little later and go to <laughs> like have a little bit more time to unwind at night or you know, work a few extra hours or you know, that it may not be the best fit for me mm -hmm. to wake up that early. I think that um, if we let it be, yes. can be some of the fun in figuring out what you require to feel cared for by yourself is allowing that space to try different things on and witnessing yourself Okay, I was up at five by three, it was a no for me. Okay, cool. Let me see what happens if I try a midday workout. Let me see what happens if I try an evening workout. What was the version of Allison I loved best? Oh, midday workout, Allison. She was the bomb. Mm -hmm. Cool. But look at that knowledge you have for yourself. And, and you know, you can kind of pat yourself on the back, even being like, <laughs> Look at me, like <laughs> I tried three different times. I didn't just settle for um, grumpy at 3 p.m. Allison, right? Exactly. I, I took the chance to see what else, what other versions of me are out there that I, I could really have some fun with. If I work out like after eight, then I feel hyper. I'm like super mm -hmm. hyped up and I have a hard time going to sleep or unwinding. <laughs> oh, you're right, like looking at when you want to eat breakfast, if you want to wait till, if you, like all different, what foods are best for you in the morning, yeah. trying new things. The thing I love about taking the time to care for ourselves is so much of our lives can feel like we're doing it for everyone else on everyone else's schedule, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone else's deadlines, whatever it may be. But when it comes to our own self-care, it's one thing we have control over. It's one thing we can show up for. And it's one thing that we can, um, intentionally create that is all ours right? yes yeah. and so looking at the conditions we have available to us and how could i make this work for me the best where so much so many other spaces in our life we can just show up to and receive you know whatever is handed to us when it comes to our self-care this is the opportunity now to declare and go after what it is um, you require right yeah, I want to add one more thing before we hopped off too, is that it doesn't look, I know we said this last time, but it doesn't <laughs> look the same. Yeah. And when you're experimenting, like, to be really easy on yourself that, you know, because my other friend wakes up at five and then she has two hours before her kids get up and oh my God, that sounds like such a luxury thing to do. And why can't I do that? <laughs> why isn't that suiting for me? Like to, as those thoughts, it's okay if those thoughts come up because yeah. we do that sometimes, especially with social media. Yeah. We think, oh my gosh, she made this much money in the first, well, I mean, maybe if it's true or not, but this first <laughs> few weeks of her business and oh my gosh, I have to do that too. And I'm just a failure because of, oh, and then it just keeps going. Like to remember to, it's okay to have those feelings or those mm -hmm. thoughts and like, 
be easy and kind on yourself and release them and f- mm-hmm. like forgive them like it's okay for me to experiment I know that maybe I tried that for a month even yeah and that wasn't a good fit for me so I'm gonna get two more hours of sleep or I'm gonna go to bed at a later time and wake up a little later or I'm gonna eat this in the morning and I'm gonna give my kid this in the morning it's okay if they do this because this is what is the best fit for us I'm just how how would you say to go through that process of kind of letting go of um one it of, doesn't fit yeah you know one of my when it comes to self-care one of my favorite quotes to share is self-care is a personal journey mm. harp like just keep repeating that harp on yourself personal journey personal journey personal journey um i first heard that a version of that phrase the very first yoga class i went to back when i was uh 22 um because i'm there at yoga it's me super small class two other women who are at least 25 years older than me bending and and doing all these things and i'm like trying to be in these poses i've never this is my first yoga class i'm looking around at them like where am i what (laughs) is this that i've gotten myself into and the teacher didn't call me out but she's very casually said remember guys yoga is a personal journey go at your own Aww. pace go at your own flow da, 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 all that and that's always stuck with me and I feel like that's the same thing with self-care it's a personal journey it's your experience you can get caught up looking at what everyone else is doing you can but let's remember that it's a personal journey what do you need right I, I mentioned that earlier that's our prompt ask yourself every day what do I need to what do I need today what do I need to feel good today whatever you want to throw in there but what do you need today not what is working for so-and-so, not what did I see homegirl on Insta do, right? What do I need today? What am I willing to try out today, right? Mm. What am I, what do I want to experience today? Personal journey, focus on what, what you require, focus on getting clear about what you require first, then start doing the things, trying things out, building your confidence, showing up for yourself, Um, but never forget personal journey, Self-care, self, me, Mm -hmm. not Allison. (laughs) Yeah, coming back. Yeah, what I need. Um, Coming back to center. Come back there because you know what you need. You know what you require. As you continually show up, you'll build that confidence and that trust, that self-trust for yourself, right? That self-trust that says having a shit day, but I know if I go do X, Y, and Z, I'll come back to center, I'll come back rounded, I'll feel taken care of, and you know what, I'll have the stamina and energy to show up for whatever tomorrow holds for me, right? Mm. Yes, I love, I love ending on that too. <laughs> so true. <laughs> All right, bye! <laughs> <laughs> so people can find you, it's Vibrant, it's Miriam at Vibrant Lifestyle Coaching, right? Uh, okay, so Insta, Insta, Insta. is, at it's ITS Miriam Pop. Mm-hmm. Um, here on Facebook, it's at Vibrant LC. You'll find my business page. Um, you can come hang out on my personal page. Sometimes I get a little weird there. Sometimes I just throw down a lot of jokes, but <laughs> it's Miriam Pop. Um, but yeah, come hang out. Perfect. Perfect. As always, it's a pleasure, Miriam. <laughs> yeah. Same. Same, Allison. Take care. Have a great night. You too.